Hey everybody, Aaron Count with Sage Dynamics. This video, we're gonna start a series on managing your RDS sight picture on the handgun. When I originally set out to film this video, uh, it occurred to me pretty quickly that I wasn't gonna be able to cover the topic in depth in one video. So this is gonna be a multi-part series. Uh, originally, the video was just going to be on transitioning from point of aim to point of aim using um, your RDS, which I'm just gonna refer to from here on out as an RMR because that's the optic that I choose to use, but it applies to any miniature red dot uh, optic you're gonna put on a handgun. Uh, there's some tips and some techniques that we'll go into, but once I realized, uh, not necessarily the complicated nature of the technique, but the, the detail in which I need to go into to explain it, I realized it was gonna to have to be a multi-part series, so you'll have to bear with me on that. So instead of getting right into tracking multiple targets or moving from point of aim or anything like that, let's get into some of the difficulties and some of the advantages our body naturally provides us when using an RDS optic. Now, of course, the very first thing that we have to talk about is the complicated nature of developing skill set with the RMR versus a red dot on a rifle. Reason being, brought it up in videos before, rifle, we have those four points of contact, the most important one for acquisition of the optic being cheek weld. Uh, the rifle is linear, so it's going to run our, our head and our eye. It's going to roughly line it up with the optic body. We may have to move our head just a little bit, but it's going to put it in a very, very advantageous position to pick up the dot quickly without any issues. Whereas with the handgun, I have to draw and present, and I only have two points of contact, and neither of them are directly aligned with my eye. The problem that I see with shooters, especially people who are new to the RMR or new to the RDS, is not aligning the optic to the targets, it's aligning the optic to the eye. Uh, this is a very easy test that you can do on your own if you're new to RMRs. Basically find a point of aim, whatever, you know, a reasonable size, body size or smaller. Uh, I like to use the smallest point of aim possible just to underline the point. And go ahead and draw your firearm out and press out. As soon as the gun presents, if you don't see your dot, just freeze right there. And instead of moving the gun to find the dot, move your head around. And I think you'll find that the dot is on, if not close to, where your desired point of impact was going to be. So that kind of underlines the point of it's a, not an optic to target alignment issue, it's an optic to eye issue. Because our natural eye-hand coordination benefits us greatly. Unfortunately, it's something that we don't talk about, I think, nearly enough in shooting. So I'm about to demonstrate some of the advantages that eye-hand coordination is going to give you when developing your skill set with the dot. If you've been to a Sage Dynamics handgun class before, you're familiar with this gun, or I should say this slide. This is a Gen 4 slide I keep, and as you can see, there's no sights on this gun. I use this to underline the point and to demonstrate natural eye-hand coordination for the students. The reason I've taken the sights off it is so there can be no doubt in anybody's mind that I'm not actually cheating and using my sights. The purpose of this as a demonstrational tool is to show people how effective they can be, relatively speaking, just using eye-hand coordination to shoot. Now, what does that have to do with red dots? And of course, that's gonna be the biggest question when it comes to the handgun. What I mean to underline with this is alignment. How solid is my alignment going to be before I even introduce the optic into it? Another great thing that it underlines is threat-focused shooting. So with this gun, the only thing I can focus on is the threat itself. Because those focal planes have been removed from, from need, be, if we're talking about iron sights, because in an iron sight gun, I have threat front sight, rear sight. That's three different focal planes that I have to negotiate through constantly in order to shoot accurately. Now, I say constantly relative to what's going on. If the target's just stationary and not moving and I'm not trying to gauge how I'm doing, then obviously once I've gone from first to second to third or second, first, third, first, whatever, bouncing back and forth between those three focal planes, then I'm going to stay on that front sight and just use one focal plane to accommodate and shoot and get my accurate hits. And then maybe I might assess after so many rounds have been delivered or things have been changed. When we use an RDS, we stay threat focused the entire time. So this is very similar to the way that I'm going to shoot with my red dot. But I have to understand at my own personal skill level how much my eye-hand coordination can help me achieve that goal. So for this demonstration, I'm going to give you a performance view of the target. Now, because I have no sights on my gun, how accurate can I possibly be? And what's the point? I have to underscore this. I'm not advocating this as a way to shoot, but I am advocating that you know inherently what your eye-hand coordination can do for you. This is nothing different than a pitcher being able to throw a ball to a catcher. You think about the first time you've thrown a baseball, you probably weren't very good at it because your eye-hand coordination hadn't developed, or at least it hadn't developed in relation to that skill. But our eye-hand coordination when it comes to shooting can do a lot for us, and that's the whole point of this demonstration. Again, again, not advocating that you take your sights off your guns or that you shoot without sight pitcher. 
but this is just to underscore that our, our inherent uh, natural eye-hand coordination can benefit us greatly if we understand how well it can help us or how much we need to work on it. So you're going to be seeing my hits. Ideally, I want to get the smallest point of aim possible, which would be uh, like an A-zone hit, which would be this box here, those critical organs located in the thoracic cavity. Realistically, though, I'm going to go with a critical region hit, a uh, high thoracic in general, so there's a lot of stuff in there that doesn't react well to gunfire, and I want to hit all of that. Um, I want all my rounds to be in this box right here, but I can't guarantee that that's actually going to happen. Uh, so I'm giving myself a little bit of a margin of error. I'm going to shoot a couple different rounds, or a couple rounds, I should say, at multiple distances, working my way back from a reasonable distance to a very, I would consider a very unreasonable distance. But I'm only going to be using eye-hand coordination to do this, so we'll see just how well I get it done. Again, this is the firearm I'm going to be using. There's no sights on this gun. So let's get started. Didn't hit my camera, big thumbs up. Majority of the rounds fired were roughly where I wanted them to be. Again, I don't have any sights, so I can't do precision aiming. I can only do practical aiming based on eye-hand coordination. I started at eh, probably between three and five-ish, not really sure. And then I worked my way back to in between 15 and 20 meters, which is way outside what I'd consider realistic uh, performance standards for this type of technique, but I did it to underscore the point. I'm pretty sure every round I fired hit this target. Now, I'm not so sure if every round I fired, I mean, just looking at it, as I got back, my uh, impact started to kind of fall low. But the majority of the rounds that I fired impacted where I wanted them to impact. Uh, this is something that you can do pretty easily on your own just by taping your sight. Or if you have an RMR, taping your rear sight if you use sights rear and just turning the dot off. Again, the point of this is to demonstrate that we already have some things working uh, for us in regards to getting our alignment the way that we want it to be. But because we only have two points of contact on that firearm, and we may not understand some of the nuances of using a red dot on a handgun, um, we may not be working towards our best efficiency, which is my whole point of making this video. So already we've got eye-hand coordination, which is going to benefit us to a certain degree in getting our proper alignment. Now we need to understand what goes on in the RMR's window. Because there's only two points of contact on the RMR gun, we just got our two hands for our handgun. Um, the natural tremor, the natural movement of those hands is somewhat exaggerated. It's still present with iron sights, but we don't notice as much because the movement is anchored to our hands, whereas the dot seems to be able to float independently. So here's ideally what you would want. Zero movement on the dot, centered in the glass, minimizing parallax as much as possible. Unfortunately, that natural trimmer looks more like this. This is just that natural movement that you're going to have with, a, with an RMR equipped handgun. It's nothing to worry about. My experience is the smaller the dot that I choose, 6.5 down to 3.25, even smaller than that with, with some other models such as Delta Point Pros, which come in 2 MOA, uh, is the smaller the dot, the greater the exaggeration. But do not worry about it once we understand it. Um, really great advice I got from a, from a former instructor of mine is you need to learn how to embrace the wobble. And what he was talking about when he said that was regards to, to red dots on rifle, but it applies to handguns, I think, even more, is there's going to be some natural movement as long as we understand what that movement is. What we would prefer to have when it comes to natural movement, because there's going to be some, is more of a washing machine effect like this, like what you're seeing. 
What we don't want is what I like to call the Jackson Pollock effect, meaning the dot is just kind of pinballing around and we don't have any real strong control over its movements based on our own technique and our own inefficiencies. If you have the wobble, if you get the washing machine, that kind of concentric motion on the dot, you're going to be able to shoot effectively with that once you understand the application. If the dot is erratic and we don't have any conscious or subconscious control or unconscious control over what the dot is doing, our accuracy is going to be very frustrating and it might kind of turn us off to the concept of the dot altogether. Some people pick a dot up, shoot it for 500 rounds and never shoot it again because they feel like I'm just not going to be good with it, I'm not as fast with it. How many years, how many rounds have they dedicated to iron sights? You have to put in the work too. There are no royal roads, no shortcuts to proficiency. Adopting a new system takes work. It takes time, it takes repetition. Uh, go back to the baseball analogy. Nobody steps on the pitching mound and gets that ball exactly where they want it on their first throw. It's gonna take hundreds and hundreds and hundreds and thousands of throws to get it correct. And that's one of the, the, the downsides to shooting is there's some things that literally can only be practiced with the shooting of live ammunition. So let's understand worst case scenario on the dot. What I'm gonna demonstrate is the parallax that is there if your alignment is not as good as it should be. So we're back to the high thoracic. This is going to be my point of aim, right there. That's where I want all my rounds to go. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna stack the dot to an extreme parallax to demonstrate the efficacy, if you will, of uh, parallax's effect on the shooter at very reasonable distances. So I'll be stacking the dot to the extreme right of the window, extreme top of the window, extreme bottom of the window, extreme left of the window. And the reason I'm doing this is demonstrate that parallax does exist relative to the distance you're shooting from. And to underline what we've already been talking about is the eye to optic alignment. Because if my eye is perfectly centered behind the optic, I wouldn't be able to move the gun in the way to do this. I have to move my head, if you will, to create the parallax that can be present if my eye to optic alignment isn't where it needs to be. I'll be starting off at a reasonably close distance. Just four shots, no hurry. So as you can see from our first four shots, there is a slight bit of parallax being introduced. Of course, I could have something to do with that as well. And that was at a reasonably close distance. Now we're gonna shoot it from kind of an intermediate or a little further back to see if this magnifies as we get further away from our desired point of impact. Now I wouldn't say our hits changed in any really meaningful way other than they are sitting a little bit higher. You also have to account for uh, the zero distance of the RMR, which on this gun is uh, 25 meters. So the closer you are, you're gonna have to adjust if you want that precision accuracy, just like, like you would have to with the rifle. There's gonna be somewhat of a holdover because of the mechanical offset, or if you will, optic height over bore. So now we're gonna push it back to a much greater distance and see if that parallax is really going to complicate our shooting or not. So does parallax exist on an RDS mounted to a handgun? The answer is yes. Uh, parallax exists on all red dot optics. It's just some are near parallax free, some go even so far as to say they are parallax free, which is technically not really possible. They can, they can get really close though these days. As you can see, the shots kind of came together. Now again, I could have something to do with that because I ultimately am in control of the firearm, but with the dot, with those extreme stackings that I did, three distances, my shot group maintained roughly within an inch to an inch and a half at the most extreme of my desired point of impact despite those three different distances. Now granted, the further I push it back, the wider it's going to be, but we are talking about a handgun at handgun distances. Should you be able to hit accurately at 25 meters? Yes. 35 meters? Yes. 45 meters? Yes. 50 meters? Yes. Accuracy relative to the standards under which you have to shoot and the time you have available to do it. Uh, but just for an isolation of skill purposes, that stacking of the dot, that extreme parallax stacking of the dot, did not affect my ability to get hits close to my point of aim in any really meaningful way if we're talking about shooting critical accuracy or practical accuracy on the human body. So now the million dollar question, where am I going with all of this? Remember when I started the video, I said embrace the wobble and that's where we're headed. Consistent controllable dot movement based on the natural trimmer and a reasonable amount of discipline when it comes to dot extreme movement. 
the practical demonstration I just did was to show you that even if the dot is to the extreme right, extreme left, top left, or somewhere else in the window, as long as the dot is superimposed over where I want to hit, I'm threat focused and the dot is in my point of vision to where the dot is over where I want that round to go, I should get a hit relative to my ability to control the actual firing of the gun. Because it's one focal plane shooting, the only thing I need to get consistent hits is for that dot to cross over the point at which I want the round to impact as I perform my fundamentals on the gun in order to shoot it. The better my fundamental control, recoil management, so on and so forth, the better my trigger control, my grip, uh, the more likely I am to get a hit as close to possible as where I want to hit. Now, group think in regards to this shooting is we always want that one ragged hole. We want all our bullet holes touching each other in some kind of um, creation of the perfect shot group, right? Well, that's relative to the speed and the distance at which I'm shooting. Uh, the further back I get unsupported, the less likely I am to be able to deliver that one ragged hole theory um, in respective to how much time I have to do it. And, you know, time is one of the, the three popular metrics for measuring skill with the handgun or with firearms in general. So what I want to do is be able to drill that ragged hole, relatively speaking, uh, at the distance and the speed and the cadence I'm able to do it. Because I only have to worry about one focal plane, and I have to understand that as long as the dot is over where I want to hit with relative handgun distances, I should be able to put that round roughly where I wanted it to go, if not perfectly where I wanted it to go. Now, the dot to the extreme right, extreme left, extreme top, extreme bottom, or any extreme positioning in the, the RDS window is a bit of an extreme. If you have really poor recoil management or you're shooting from a very unorthodox position or you're shooting one-handed and you're not comfortable with it, I can see the dot moving to that extreme. What most people have or what most people experience is the dot recoils out of the window and then it comes back. And it may recoil to the left, it may recoil to the right, which is helping you diagnose where you need to apply more pressure in your grip to keep the dot bouncing more or less on that vertical. Uh, we don't want vertical and horizontal bouncing if we can avoid it. That's why we want that washing machine effect, embracing the wobble again. So what I'm gonna do now is try to maintain my maximum cadence at a few different distances to see just how tight of a group I can shoot. The eight and a half by 11 inch piece of paper is probably one of the better training aids you can have, especially with a can of adhesive, because it represents a very, uh, relatively speaking size wise to that critical region of the body we want to shoot our B zone or C zone if you will. So I'm going to put that up there so you guys can see my progress as I move back to varied distances. So now that we've fully explained and fully explored that natural dot movement in the window, um, for those of you that have RMR handguns or RDS handguns, whatever your chosen optic is, you can take it to the range and practice it and work on the proficiency of it and see for yourself how the exaggerated movement, that natural trimmer, isn't quite as bad as we think it is. Well, you know, we, we come up on iron sights and, and that movement is still there, but we just don't see it because it's attached to the firearm um, and it's the, your point of aim isn't allowed to float so to speak, and that's that's probably the best way I can explain it. But you can see how, just from my demonstration, if that was helpful to you, that your natural eye-hand coordination uh, in conjunction with working on optic to eye alignment is gonna allow you to get the hits that you wanna get uh, relative to the distance and the cadence that you wanna maintain. Um, because this is such a, a huge topic, I wasn't able to make just one long video because uh, the video just would have been too long. So in the next video, we'll start addressing shifting points of aim on the dot and working into uh, what I would consider practical versus precision accuracy with the RDS. Until then, I'm Aaron Count with Sage Dynamics. Train accordingly. So here we go.
distance where it kind of starts to fall apart because it is gross eye-hand coordination. 